All right, let's get started. It's about 2.01 right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the seventh and last Zoom webinar of a seven-part series brought to you by Tech Savvy Seniors. I am Nick, and I'll be your host. Today, we are going to talk about senior-friendly sites. Senior-friendly sites are like libraries of helpful information made specifically to help senior citizens. Lee sites also cover many different aspects of life, from humor to health. During the coronavirus pandemic, when it may be hard to visit your local library in person, these sites provide a lot of helpful information and can be found directly on the internet, which makes them quick to access. In this presentation, we will talk about 13 of these helpful senior sites and also visit each one to see what it's like. The first site is Google. Google is a search engine that will provide you with information about other sites, phone numbers, addresses, movie times, television listings, and just about anything you would like to know. Now let's visit google.com and see what it's like. So if you wanna visit Google, just click this link right here, or you can't click on it. So type it in in a search engine like Google or the, in any search engine that you have. And this page right here will come up. And let's say you wanna look up something like pictures of dogs. You can look up dogs, right? And just click that into the search engine and you'll be brought to a page that looks like this. And from here, you can just scroll down and it'll give you websites and articles and a bunch of in pictures, a bunch of information related to dogs, and you can keep on going. There's like a million pages that will be brought up. Um, necessarily, you don't have to keep on going to find what you want. Maybe just one, two, three to four pages in, you'll find what you're looking for. Um, and then it'll come up with commonly asked questions by other people that use Google, such as what are the five, what are five facts about dogs? and which is the most dangerous dog, is a dog good pet? And those are just questions that other people have looked up about dogs in Google. And here you can, this picture right here brings you to images of dogs. This brings you to shopping. This brings you to videos of dogs. This brings you to news about dogs. So for example, three, uh, there's just a bunch of articles about dogs. And you can go to tools and you can sort by relevance or you can sort by date when it comes to news. So if you sort by date, this means that the latest articles that were posted about dogs will come up first. Um, and for images, you can go to tools and you can sort by all these different things. Let's say you want to sort by size. So this is picture size and I only want large pictures of dogs and I can click large and only large pictures of dogs will come up. So that's about it for Google. The second site is eldertrex.com, which displays travel adventures for people 50 years and older. And if you want to visit eldertrex.com, type in eldertrex.com into a web browser. And once you do that, it'll bring you to a site that looks like this. And from here, you can do, you can click on, maybe you want to visit the Americas, somewhere in the Americas. And this is like a travel website. This is only, only for travel. So if you want to go on a vacation, basically. And this brings you with, brings up all of the vacations or travel plans uh, for places in the Americas. Or maybe you want to go to Europe or the Middle East. You can click on that and it'll bring you to all the planned uh, travels to the Middle East or uh, to Europe. And if you want to, these are a bunch of different links you can click on in eldertrex.com. Maybe you want to learn about Eldertrex. You can click here and just find out a bunch of information about what Eldertrex is like. But in general, this is just a great way to book or join a travel or vacation.
The third site is seniorlaw.com, which provides legal information for seniors on subjects including health, insurance, estate planning, and the rights of elderly and disabled. So if you want to go here to this website, again, just like the other ones, you just type in seniorlaw.com into a web browser, and it'll bring you to a site that looks just like this. And from here, you can all of these places direct you to different areas on seniorlaw.com. They have their like news, breaking news right here. And click on seniors. It'll bring you to this, which is information for seniors. Uh, they're advocates and other professionals. So this is like the senior part of the of the website. And let's see. So yeah, that brings you to the same place. And if you want to like learn about the different uh, people on seniorlaw.com, like the attorneys essentially, click here and see all of them. And then that's about it for for seniorlaw.com. The fourth site is microsoft.com slash enable slash aging slash chip slash ASPX. Uh, I know there are a lot of dashes there, but feel free to screenshot or write that down somewhere to remember. I'll take a second so you can do that if you want to access this. Um, usually links don't have all of those weird dashes and stuff. You can usually just type in something quick like google.com, for example, and it'll bring you right to what you're looking for. But this, in this case scenario, uh, there's lots of slashes and dashes, which makes it a bit inconvenient. But if you get the, if you type it in correctly, then it'll bring you to where you want to go. So again, type this into a web browser and it'll bring you to a site that looks like this. And there are a bunch of different like sections of this website that you can click on and explore. So for example, if you want to learn about vision you can click here and it'll bring you to a bunch of different articles and things to learn about vision uh, for example like experience maps and 3d sound that seems very complicated so maybe i don't know maybe if it's too complicated you don't want to look into it but there's definitely a lot of information here like mental health maybe minimized visual distractions just a lot of information and Article. So if you want to learn more about maybe minimize visual distractions, you can click on this and it'll bring you even deeper into the website and more specific information. So that's about it for Microsoft.com. The fifth site is AARP.org, which includes tons of information and articles on health, cooking, shopping, discounts, travel, insurance and all other important uh, topics. So if you want to access AARP.com, click on AARP.com and I'll bring you to a site that looks like this. This is the home screen. So these are just a bunch of articles. And from here, you can just click on one that interests you. So let's see, maybe how to prepare for natural disasters. Um, so this is just an article that will help you prepare for natural disasters. So you can learn about that. And the, the topics on this site range from, from like, there's a very large range of topics on this website, essentially. So you can learn a lot from aarp.com. And you can also make an account. We won't go over that right now, but if you're a common user of AARP, then you can make an account, register, and it'll offer you different and unique things compared to just viewing it without an account. And see up here, you can direct yourself to different articles. So a very good website. I would definitely recommend this one. The sixth site is roadscholar.org, which pr provides adventures and learning tips for seniors. This is kind of like eldertrucks.com, but more focused towards the tips section or like learning about adventure. So this is the home screen. You can type in roadscholar.org into 
a web browser and it'll bring you to a page that looks something like this. Um, so again, oh no. Sorry, someone just called me. I apologize for that. So once you get to this homepage right here, you will be, these are like, like, like eldertrex.com essentially. These are all of the adventures or the trips that you can go on. So maybe North America, you wanna go on a trip in North America. You click on this and this is where you can like see all the different trips that are going on in North America. So definitely cool. And then virtual map, virtual campus. Um, so there's a lot to explore on all of these websites. So a lot to explore on this one too. So you can just go and look around and explore for yourself if you're interested in this type of thing. And the seventh site is suddenlysenior.com, which provides weekly online newspapers that provide humor, news, and senior advocacy for seniors 55 and older. So again, if you want to access this, go to senior, suddenlysenior.com and you will be brought to a site that looks like this. And again, just like all the other websites, it's like on homepage right here and you can see like what they want you to see, like the most important or the most viewed types of articles. Um, So you can just scroll through and look. So maybe you want to go to senior jokes. These are a bunch of jokes for seniors. So let's just read one. The best old jokes, funny jokes. If you're in need of a laugh, you've come to the right place. Okay, so let's go to more. I don't, so yeah, you can go here and you can find senior jokes and trivia right here. Online quizzes and trivia facts, Let's go to trivia facts. So again, there's a lot of information on here. If you're interested in like jokes or trivia or any articles in gen general, um, this is a great place to find that stuff. The eighth site is webmd.com, which provides health information and tips to keep you healthy. So if you want to access that, go to this link right here and it'll bring you, uh, it'll bring you to this page, webmd. So you can click on this article and learn about the coronavirus. The ninth site is mayoclinic.org, which is a great medical info base that provides basic information about health issues. So maybe if you are curious about a um, medical issue or something that's going on, you can come to Mayo Clinic and maybe search Mayo Clinic. Maybe you can search up coronavirus. You can search up anything really and I'll bring you all this information about the coronavirus. So click on this and it'll, it'll teach you all about the symptoms, all about what's going on with coronavirus. So definitely a great place to go if you wanna learn about medical issues or ongoings. The 10th site is themoneyalert.com, which provides personal and retirement financial planning resources. So this is good. Uh, with regards to finance, click on or type in themoneyalert.com into a web browser, and it'll bring you to a page that looks like this. And from here, there's a bunch of articles. You can go to one of these sites that, or one of these links that you want to maybe learn more about. So maybe if you want to learn more about real estate, you can click real estate, and all of this stuff will come up. Maybe you wanna learn about VA loan requirements, click on that and you'll get an article about VA loan requirements. So a very good place to learn about finances. The 11th site is consumerreports.org, which is a subscription service 
but often available on your local library's website. So make sure to check out your local library's website before um, making an account because they could actually potentially provide it to you for free. Uh, that rates consumer items, and you don't necessarily have to make an account to access consumer reports. So that's we're not gonna we're just gonna view it for free. And if you go to consumerreports.org right here, type that into a web browser, it'll bring you to a site that looks like this. And what this basically this site basically does is it it gives you reports on different uh, basically products. So maybe you're trying to find a TV right you go to tv and then it'll just give you a bunch of reports on different tvs right here the 12th site is nia.nih.gov and this is a national and this means a national institute on aging and this is the national institute on aging's website and it contains valuable articles and information on issues relating to health. So we've gone over like two or three other uh, sites that cover health, and this is just another one. So you can go to and this link right here, you can type that in to a web browser, bring you some somewhere that looks like this. And just like all the other websites, it has a homepage, has articles right here. And the search bar right here, you can look up something that you're curious about. So let's say you're curious about the coronavirus again, type in coronavirus. And these are all articles about the coronavirus. So you click on that, and it'll bring you to this article right here, talking about the coronavirus. So a great place to learn things about medical ongoings. And the 13th and last site is your local library's website which will contain a lot of information and also allow you to access digital books and other resources that may cost money. Your library may be able to provide those to you for free. Uh, and it's also just a great hub to be able to go to free and subscription-based sites and information databases. So definitely check out your local library's website there is no link to this because it'll change depending on where you are, where you, where you live. So if you want to look up your local library's website, just look up the town that you live in a library in a web browser. And what will come up first will likely be your, your local library's website or web page. So definitely check that out. Next up, we have questions. So we have a few questions to that were sent into our email and we're going to go over those right now. The first question is, are there any sites that provide scholarly articles? So this is a great question. Um, the sites that we talked about, those articles are definitely, uh, they're definitely good places to learn from. However, scholarly articles, uh, Lows can be found. Actually, you can go to Google, Google Scholar, and I'll show you how to do that right now. Uh, so if you go to, let's just go here. And then if you go to type in Google Scholar and click here, this is basically Google's form of uh, Google scholars, basically, how to look up scholarly articles. So you type in coronavirus a bunch of scholarly articles on coronavirus will come up. And from here, you can just click on whatever one you want to. So another decade and another coronavirus. And then this is like entirely a scholarly article about coronavirus. The next question is, if I like a website a lot, is there any way for me to bookmark it so it can come up first on my web browser for easy access? This is a great question. Um, all you have to do actually is press, if you're using Google, is press the star. So I'll show you again. Maybe you really like nia.nih.gov and you want to put that into your favorites. All you have to do is click this star right here and click done. Or you can name, name it whatever you want, but I'm going to keep it the same name. And what it will do is it will bring you, it will put that site right here. 
Um, and this is basically your favorites. So you can easily access that whenever you come on to Google. And it's a great way to keep track of all your favorite sites. So mine, that's, this didn't come up, NIH.org didn't come up because I already have a lot of sites already favorited. But if I wanted, if I didn't have any of these sites favorited, it would come up right here. All right, that concludes the question section. Uh, that actually concludes the whole presentation. Thank you all for attending, and I hope this was able to help. Again, if you have any questions, you can send an email to us at nick at techsavvyseniors.org. Also, feel free to visit our website for more information about this topic at techsavvyseniors.org. So right here, and then this is the email. Thank you all and have a good rest of the day.